welcome back to Zeus Alive. My name is Elisa, and we're going to be meeting some very cool friends with myself and Holly. But before we do so, I'm going to show you some really cool artwork. This is from Eddie, four years old, and his rendition of our beautiful Rocky the Boa Constrictor. I particularly love his idea of Rocky's scales. This is absolutely beautiful, Eddie. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, you guys, we'd love to see your artwork and we'd love to share it, so please keep sending it our way, all right? So we're actually gonna do something a little bit different since we already met one of our porcupines um, in the way beginning of Zoo School Pokey. We're gonna meet him again. We're gonna travel through um, our Education Porcupines exhibits, and Holly and I are gonna tell you all about their husbandry, their enrichment, and their training, all right? So you guys can come follow us. Uh, hey, guys. So, um, Pokey here, I don't know if you remember him, um, he's kind of a big deal now, um, but he likes to kind of meet us at the door when we come to see him. He's really fond of humans, um, he comes right over the door to meet us when we go into his enclosure. So we have a special way of entering his exhibit when we go in with him. So we have him come over to this little log here that's just out of the way of his door, and then we give him, we call it his station, and we give him a little treat for hanging out on his station so that we can run in. Um, while he's being distracted. So he can just have a snack or two while Elisa is sneaking in behind him, and then I'll be able to follow in as well while he's distracted eating little treats. All right, guys, so if you guys have been to the zoo before, you've probably seen this enclosure from the other side. Um, but just so we can kind of explain a little bit more for you guys, um, so you can see that we have things really perched up. We call this perching. When we take logs from native trees and set them up in their exhibit in a way that they can explore um, in more vertical space. So as Pokey comes over here, in just a minute, he's just finishing up his little apple, you'll see him kind of lumbering along. He's got a big round body. We sometimes refer to him as a little um, beach ball. Here he comes. And these kind of short little legs. Um, it's kind of hard to tell when you look at him like this, but Pokey is actually incredibly strong. So he loves climbing, he loves going up trees, up branches. He can completely support his own body weight, which is about 20 pounds, with his little beef cake arms here. And he loves climbing around on all these trees here in his exhibit. So that's what they're all doing here for him. Um, we have it set up so that we can spread his diet around to different areas, so we can forage and try to find the food. As we've said before, Pokey is really fond of humans, maybe a little bit too much so. He was raised by humans, so he's a little bit clean. But you know what, Pokey? You're not the star today. Khaleesi is. So we're gonna head on into Khaleesi's exhibit and hang out with her. He doesn't, he's, he's like, wait, where are you guys going? I want you to hang out with me. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Come on, bud. Come over All here. right, guys, so uh, while Pokey's a little bit distracted with Holly, we're going to start over with Khaleesi. Um, so again, oh, he wanted a particular piece. <laughs> so again, these guys are roommates, um, but they don't share the exact same space. Sometimes to um, change things up, we'll switch them around so that they can explore the different sides, but they each like to be in their own space. All right, so without further ado, Holly's gonna talk to you a little bit about Khaleesi, our female education porcupine. Awesome, so she's been waiting for her moment to shine, you guys. Khaleesi's a real special girl. We've had her in the education department for a little over four years. She was born to our two exhibit porcupines, Spork and Ivana, five years ago. We actually just celebrated her fifth birthday on the 28th of April. You might not be able to tell, but she is a good bit bigger than Pokey. Pokey is only two years old, so he's not quite full grown yet. Um, she probably is at her full grown size now, and she's about 24 pounds. So she weighs almost five pounds more than Pokey. So he will continue to grow and possibly outsize her, but who knows, our largest porcupine here so far has actually been a female. Um, so we'll see how big Pokey ends up. All right, so I'm gonna see if Khaleesi wants to um, hang out with us in, in a training session. So Khaleesi is trained to touch this target stick right here and move around her enclosure, um, touching it and receiving rewards. So we're gonna see if she wants to come hang out with us and check out some of the enrichment we brought her, um, but we'll just see if she's interested in participating. So what I'm looking for is for, for her to actually touch this target stick with 
her nose. She sometimes tries to cheat a little bit and we'll just come really close to it, but we try to get her to officially touch her nose with it. And that's when we um, make this sound, which is our bridge and reward her for doing so. Now, if you guys have dogs or cats at home, you probably use a bridge um, and just don't really, really think about it. So you probably tell them good if they do something that, that you wanted them to do. And that's kind of you letting them know, hey, you did what I was asking for. Um, so here in the zoological facility, there's so many of us working with these animals that sometimes one person saying good or good girl or good Khaleesi can sound a little bit different to her. Um, and it might or might not get confusing for her if she's always doing the right things. So we use bridges here like this clicker or a whistle. So that bridge sound for them is always something very consistent. So it kind of makes them pick up these behaviors faster for us. Can we come over here? Once we get her off of these precarious branches, she might be able to go a little bit faster. Oh my gosh, we're supposed to be able to use... So you can see we also have a bunch of enrichment in here and this is kind of getting in her way. So we give them different browse to chew on um, on a daily basis. So porcupines in the wild are eating various kinds of trees and we want them to be able to do that here too. So you can see that she has some pine browse that was right there that she's been chewing on. You can do it. going to come down off of there and hang out with us. Um, but just so you guys know, so what I'm treating her with today is a mixture of her regular diet, which she loves, you guys. It's this rodent block right here. Now, this is one of her favorite treats that she gets here at the zoo. Um, I'm going to give her one of these in a little while once, once we get her up here to let you see. But when we give her a piece of rodent block, which she absolutely loves, it takes her roughly 19 minutes to eat a piece. That's an exaggeration. It's probably closer to 45 seconds, but it's a long time. So when we're trying to train her or move her around her exhibit, if we were waiting for her to eat this entire piece before each new behavior, a training session would be really, really long. So what I did is I mixed, she can't, I don't think she can figure this out. Uh, I mixed her rodent block, um, I broke it down into little bits and then mixed it with some banana. So it's a nice soft mush and she can just take a little tiny bite of it. Um, as she's training, it's higher reward than a regular rodent block because it's got some sugar in it from that banana, right? Can you come? Can you even, is this log too, too skinny for you? I don't think it is. I think she's just, she's trying to take it with her hands. She's just reaching out for it. Come on, Khaleesi, you can do it. I feel like I talked about how skilled they are in trees and she's not really showing off those skills so well at this moment. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if we can try to, to get her off of here. Um, we'll probably just try to bring her some food in a different way. Um, we're actually gonna have Elisa show you guys some of her enrichment that we're gonna hopefully offer her if we can get her down from here. Yeah, all right, guys. So um, along with the enrichment part of our animals um, daily lives, uh, we, we want to provide them with things that can keep them preoccupied. So uh, whether that be scent enrichment, food enrichment, tactile enrichment, uh, you name it. So we have a variety of things that happen to be some of Khaleesi's favorites. So um, for our porcupines, since they are rodents, they have extraordinarily strong front teeth um, that never stop growing. So they have to constantly chew on wood, which you can see in both Pokey and Khaleesi's enclosures um, there's plenty of. Um, we have to give them really, really hard plastic toys so that they can't chew uh, it through and swallow it. So this happens to be um, a jolly ball that she really likes. Sometimes we'll stick food in there to promote some scavenging behaviors that might be exhibited of wild porcupines. Um, so they have to tumble it around to get the food out. And so one scent that she really likes happens to be sage. So what we do with our scent enrichment, because their noses are much stronger than our noses, um, what we'll often do is wet a paper towel and then sprinkle some of the scent on top. A lot of the times our animals like herbs much more than perfumes. Perfumes um, we have to be really careful with, with the light, um, because they happen to um, have really, really sensitive noses. So 
with the perfume, we'll take it a little bit on our finger sometimes and then rub it on a piece of enrichment. Uh, so what I've done is I've wiped our scent enrichment all over the ball, which happens to be one of her favorites. Um, and we'll see maybe a little bit later if she wants to explore that. Along with the chewing, we have an antler that Pokey and Khaleesi both really enjoy. Um, and this is really good to chew on, again, for their teeth, right? So their teeth never stop growing, so they have to be able to chew on things uh, in order to naturally grind down those teeth. One other uh, piece of enrichment before we go back to Khaleesi. This is one of her favorite things in the summertime. It is a piece of granite that we stick in our uh, commissary freezer that Ian was so gracious graciously lent us for today and today is not super super hot so she probably wouldn't need this today but in our really really warm days um, our porcupines act like they've never experienced the heat um, and Khaleesi is especially dramatic so we give this to her because it's nice and cold and she'll lay right on top of it pretty much all day long <laughs> so Khaleesi really really likes her granite slab. Um, it looks like we finally um, were able to coax Khaleesi down with that training stick and some food. So let's see if she'll end up walking up on the, to this table for you guys, okay? What do you think? So for those of you guys who um, missed Khaleesi's, uh, some of her information and Pokey's information, Khaleesi just turned five years old on April 28th and Pokey just turned a year old on April 25th. So Khaleesi is um, a little bit bigger than Pokey. I believe Pokey is about 19 and a half pounds and Khaleesi weighs about 23 pounds. All right guys, and this is one of the most important things we do with targeting um, is get her to come onto the scale stress-free. So we weigh every animal here at the zoo at least once a month because um, that's the best way for us to see the health of our animals, right? So they're not going to tell us if they're feeling a little bit sick. So the easiest way for us to monitor that they're probably doing pretty good is to monitor their health um, or monitor their weight and make sure that it's staying consistent. So that's how we know, you know, they're eating, they're digesting their food correctly, they're not losing any weight. Um, so this is a great way for us to be able to get her on the scale. Watch this one, I'm going to do it now. Um, to check her weight every few weeks, you guys. So here she comes. Oh my gosh, she's so big. Those numbers just go up so quick. Now, porcupines are very inquisitive too. This scale is used for other animals here at the zoo. And even though we clean it between animals, it still smells like other animals. And she does have a really powerful schnoz here that you can see her moving around. Um, so she's smelling all the other animals that have been on here. Um, and that's very interesting to her as well. That's cool. Just go everywhere but the scale. All right. If I just move her tail a little bit, maybe we can see. So their quills um, are so ten point. What do we got? Ten point five even. All right, and that is kilograms, guys. So if you want a quick math lesson, you just multiply kilograms by two point two. And then you have your weight in pounds. So we do measure our animal's weight here in grams and kilograms. So that means that she's about 23 pounds. So pretty consistent with her normal weight. Um, all right, well, I think that we can do some questions, guys. In the meantime, I'm going to give her a chunk of roadblock. We're going to watch her sit here and eat it. And you'll see why I'm doing this other treat instead of the rodent block. Because you'll see this takes her quite a bit. But we are definitely going to do some questions. All right, how big do their heads get? That's a great question, you guys. Um, if you can see, it doesn't even really look like they have necks. Where does their head even start, right? So they do have a kind of small head. Um, I don't think we have a skull of them, um, but it would be nice if we could show you guys that. She's not even interested in that. She wants that banana piece, um, that banana flavored rodent block. But you'll see she took like two little bites of this and it took her, uh, how long was that? Four minutes? Were you guys timing? I don't know. Um, <laughs> All right, guys, so their heads don't get that big. That's a great question. Compared to the rest of their body, their head really isn't that big, right? All right, why do they have spikes? Great question, guys. I haven't really been focusing on their hairs today, but yeah, they're covered in these quills here that we call. They actually have three kinds of hair covering their bodies. She has, um, oh, sorry. 
They have these guard hairs that you can see that she has sticking up. Those are kind of like whiskers. So your dog and cat have whiskers and that's what they use to feel the environment around them. That's what she does with these guard hairs. She also has all this little brown hair. That's her undercoat. And then she's covered in quills. So you can mainly see them on her back, but her whole body is actually covered with these quills everywhere but her stomach, okay? And that's their defense mechanism. So if a predator comes up to these guys in the wild, tries to bite her, those quills are gonna stick into their body and actually come out and be stuck in that predator. So that predator is probably gonna be more focused in getting that quills out than trying to bite her again. So that is her defense mechanism. Great question, guys. Megan wants to know if Khaleesi has any babies of her own. Does she have any babies? That's a great question. She does not have any babies here. So all of the males that we have here at the zoo are related to Khaleesi. So she doesn't have the potential to breed right now. Um, that doesn't mean that in the future, as we get other male porcupines, um, that that might not be in the cards for her. So we'll see about that. Um, but right now, the only males here at the zoo are her father, Spork, and her half-father, who lives next to her, Pokey. Um, so for right now, no, she has, is not going to be given the potential to breed. Great question. Rebecca would like to know how much they eat in a day. How much do they eat in a day? Great question. Um, so we actually have almost her full diet right here along with some enrichment food. So some of these other foods we're giving are kind of just extras, but she will eat this whole bowl in a day. It's filled with apples, sweet potatoes, and that rodent block that she likes so much. Here, we'll have her come over. Maybe she can explore her own bowl and take some bites out of it. But I think it's around 300 grams of food. It's a good amount. Um, so she can definitely eat that a good bit. When we give her brows as well, that might be some extra food that she's consuming in a day as well. Great question. Joseph would like to know how fast she can run. That is a great question. Um, so they can actually move pretty quickly if they want to. Um, Pokey does display his speed every now and then. I'm not sure what it might be in miles per hour, but they can definitely get into a pretty good trot um, across the ground. So if they're feeling threatened, um, they can actually kind of take off at a run to get to the nearest tree uh, to climb up that to get themselves to safety. Joey would like to know how long North American porcupines live. That is an awesome question. Um, so in the wild, these guys can actually live into their late teens. Um, so somewhere between 15 and 20. So they do have a pretty good lifespan. Um, in captivity and even in the wild, they've actually been seen to sometimes live even longer. I think that there's been a couple that have been documented at close to 30 years old. I don't know how many have reached that, that level of age, but I'm sure that we're hoping to get Pokey and Khaleesi up there in age. Um, we're hoping to get them to live just as long as we can here. They have a really consistent, healthy diet and they get vet care um, pretty much constantly. So we're hoping that we can have them for upwards of 30. We think that'd be great. Liam and Ronan would like to know what their largest predator would be in the wild. Their largest predator. All right, so these guys are found throughout North America. So I would think that cougars would probably go after these guys. Um, they're large enough that they probably wouldn't be as deterred by the quills as some of the smaller mustelids that we have in the United States, weasels and things that are gonna be um, have a lot more damage from those quills on them. So that's probably their largest predator um, here in the United States. Anthony would like to know how many quills North American porcupines have. That is a great question, Anthony. So if you tried to count all the hairs on your head, it would probably be pretty difficult, right? You might just want to take one little section and try to count them all, um, but it would still take you a long time. So we do guesstimate that there's about 30,000 quills on their body, so really, really a lot, but I don't have an exact number for you. Um, it would probably take me uh, the rest of my life to try to count those quills on her and she would probably quill me quite a bit in the process. So I don't think I'll do that with her. But yeah, probably about 30,000. That's an awesome question. Emily would like to know what the difference is between different types of porcupines. Oh, that's a great question, Emily. Um, so these are the only porcupines that we have here in North America, but there are definitely other kinds. Um, there's prehensile tail porcupines from South America. I don't know if you guys had ever met Finn that we had here at the zoo, our prehensile tail porcupine, uh, but those guys do have um, the, the signature quills of porcupines, which you see in all porcupines um, that they use as their main form of defense. Um, but the South American porcupines have that prehensile tail. So when they're in trees, they're actually using that as almost a fifth leg to hold on to trees. Um, there's also some larger porcupines. The African crested porcupines in Africa are huge. So they're probably going to be three to four times larger than Khaleesi. And they have super, super long quills. 
um, that we have um, little artifacts of, but of course I didn't bring them to show you, um, but those guys are a lot cheaper to show That's a great question. That's only a description of two of them, um, but I hope that helps answer your question. Cameron would like to know uh, if Khaleesi is good at training. Uh, that's a great question. You know, Khaleesi is a superstar at training. Um, I think that she was just a little bit stuck on that log earlier, but she really is really consistent with the, the, the target stick. Um, Pokey is kind of a diva here, so when you see the differences and how they kind of progress through their training, Khaleesi really is smart and she tends to stay focused when we're training. Um, during the summer when it's really hot and she just wants to lay around and she's not as interested in food, sometimes she's not as good at it. Um, but when she's when it's nice and cool out and she's feeling motivated, um, she really is good. She's really smart and she catches on to things really quick. That's a great question. Faith would like to know how high she can climb in a tree. Oh, that's a great question. So I'm pretty sure that they can get up as high as a tree is willing to take them. So as long as that tree um, is strong enough to support their weight, they can go as high as, as that tree goes. Um, it can get a little dangerous for them, um, but they're really good at staying up there and not falling with those powerful hands. But as long as the weight of that tree um, can hold on to them, they can go pretty high. Great question. Zachary would like to know what Khaleesi's favorite food is. Her favorite food? So I hear that she really likes cantaloupe a lot. Um, it doesn't seem like she's been going to town super hard. But you know, she has liked bananas in the past a lot. I mean, she really does love her rodent block. So I think that this uh, rodent block banana combo is kind of a hit for her right now. I actually ran out of it and now she's just looking for more. Um, so I, I'm gonna go with that for right now. Great question. Oliver, Graham, and Holden from Wisconsin would like Wisconsin. to know if they are born with their quills sharp and pokey. That is an awesome question and welcome all the way from Wisconsin. That's awesome. We're so glad you guys are watching. So these guys are in fact born with all of their quills. Um, so they almost always come out head first, which is lucky for mom, um, but they come out with a body full of quills. Now those quills are pretty soft when they're first born, but those firm up within a couple hours out in the air. So they are ready to go to defend themselves. Um, we've had a lot of porcupines born here, and I've seen babies a couple hours old swinging that tail around to defend themselves. And it's really, really amazing. These guys are super impressive as babies. Jace would like to know if North American porcupines swim? Um, that's a great question. You know, Khaleesi is probably um, more fond of water than most of the other ones I've seen. You know, during the summer we offer them pools um, and little sprinkler systems and they do like to kind of dip their fingers in and rest their chins on that water um, to try to cool themselves off. So they are definitely a fan of water in that sense. But, you know, I, I don't have to look that up. I don't think that they're big swimmers, but but maybe they do, maybe they do swim around. Oh, well, it looks like our box looked it up for us um, and that they can swim. And so that's awesome. We have given Khaleesi kiddie pools in the past and she has not gone to a swim in them, uh, but maybe we just need to make it deeper for her because I would be really impressed to see that, Khaleesi. Haley would like to know who her Khaleesi's favorite keeper is. Oh, you know, I wish I could say me, but it's not. So one of our other educators here, Marissa, has been working with her for years. And so shout out to Marissa with all the great work she's been doing with her. But I would say that that's definitely Khaleesi's favorite keeper here at the zoo. Great question. Oh, that's a great question, Preston. So they can actually found, be found all over America and into Canada. You can find them around this area. So if you keep your, um, your ears or your eyes peeled, you can sometimes see them or even smell them. They have a pretty distinct um, musk off of them that I'm not really going to be able to describe to you. Um, but they are found throughout Pennsylvania. Um, so definitely keep your eyes peeled and you might be able to spot them. Logan would like to know what Khaleesi and Pokey do all day. Oh my gosh. They sleep so much, you guys, especially in the summertime. So if we're not in here offering them food, um, they're probably sleeping. Pokey, if you want to take a look at him, is doing what he usually does when we're in here with Khaleesi. And that's walking back and forth, whining at us to let us know that we should probably be in there with him instead of in here with Khaleesi. So that's his favorite thing to do while we're servicing Khaleesi's exhibit. Um, but these guys typically like to eat, climb around in their exhibit to find the food that we put out for them, and then they like to take a nap. Looks Great like question. we have two uh, more questions. Sydney would like to know how long their tail gets. Oh, 
that's a great question, Sydney. Um, so you can see Khaleesi right now on her tail right here. And it's not super long. It's kind of like a paddle almost. So if you think about a beaver, so um, these guys are actually related to beavers. You know, they are um, they are rodents like beavers, and beavers have that paddle tail. Um, porcupines kind of have a similar little paddle with their tail. They use it to kind of keep behind themselves as they're going backwards down trees, and it is very heavily quilled because they like to swing it around and hit predators with it. So it's pretty short and it's very powerful. She has a lot of muscles in that tail that she needs to whip it around really fast. So it's more like a, like a paddle tail, like a beaver. That's a great question. Uh, and our last question, Derek would like to know if we trim their nails. That is a great question. Khaleesi kind of needs a trim right now, you'll see. So they get the best trim um, once a year when they're sedated for their annuals. That's when we can really trim them down really short. Um, I don't know if you guys have tried to, to trim your dog or cat's nails at home, but they're not a huge fan of it here. Um, we are working on training with them to get them trimmed. Um, so we distract them with food and then try to do little clips with our, with our nail trimmers here to try to work them down slowly. And we are very careful not to not to quick them, not to cut them too short or other awaken training with us, because then it'll be like a negative, a negative response to that behavior that we're trying so hard to teach them. So it's a very slow um, process. And they definitely get their best nail trim once a year during their annual when they're asleep. Um, and you can cut them nice and short and they won't even feel it. But that's an awesome question. I wish we could trim them way more than we do. Her nails are a little bit long right now, but we are working on it, I promise. It's an awesome question. All right, guys, uh, that looks like all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Zoo School Live. Please tune in again tomorrow. Um, we're going to be trying to focus on our training sessions with some of our education ambassador animals this week. Um, shout out to Quest for the Best, who are going to match up to $25,000 um, of donations. So if you guys want to donate to help the zoo, you can donate through our website. Um, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow, right?